As a kid, I didn't get everything I always wanted. I was always taught that I had to work for the things that I want. If I wanted something, I had to go out and I had to work for it. If I needed money, I had to work for it. And I never went to college because I knew the goals that I had, the things that I wanted to do, college wasn't gonna get me there. I knew what I wanted wasn't gonna come from college, wasn't gonna come from a nine to five job. Being young and growing up on social medias led me to start a lot of online business such as YouTube. I tried drop shipping, tried Amazon FBA, but I wasn't seeing any results or success until I started day trading when I was 17 years old. So when I was 17, I was 2020 COVID, a lot of people, this is probably the year they started trading. I know I have a lot of people that trade right now that started in 2020. And there was a reason for that because a lot of us were inside, a lot of us couldn't work. We had to find another way to make money. And us being young people, we gravitated to social media. We gravitated to making money because that's what we knew and that's all we had. I struggled for a long time. I was jumping from strategy to strategy. I was jumping from different creators on YouTube, learning from different people, but that's what you gotta do in the beginning. I was just trying to soak up as much information so I could learn as much as possible. And once I caught a few trades, once I saw that I can make money, once that I saw I can catch trades, I told myself, if I can do it one time, I could do it again. If I can make money here, I could do it again. All I gotta do is figure out what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong, and continue doing what I'm doing right, and take away what I'm doing wrong so that I can consistently make money. One thing I always tell people is you can catch a good trade, you can make money on a trade, you can make money trading, but who's gonna make money consistently? That's the goal, we wanna replace a job. We don't wanna work for nobody else, and that is going to require us to consistently make money trading so that this can replace any income source that we have. When I first started trading, I was already like on that entrepreneur, I had that entrepreneur mindset. I started reading business books in high school. I started listening to Grant Cardone, listened to a lot of podcasts, started listening to psychology podcasts, just understanding human nature, understanding the mind. And in my opinion, I changed a lot mentally. I changed a lot when it comes to discipline. I became more consistent, I saw how you really make money. I saw that you don't need to trade your time to make money. You make money based off of value. You give value, people will pay you for it. And this is something I was learning very early on, especially into my trading career. This led me to my whole mindset shifting, the way I looked at money, the way I looked at making money, the way I looked at work, the way I looked at having a job. It all shifted for the better. I just became different. And anybody that knows me, ever since 2020, I just been a little bit different and that's not a bad thing. You have to change in order to grow. Not all change is bad. I started to understand how I could really be successful. And at this point in 2020, 2021, 2022, I was starting to take it more serious, more serious, and more serious. Until 2022, I was able to move out of my parents' house. I was able to get my first car. I was able to travel across the state and move out by myself at 19 years old. Mind you, I started trading at 17 and I was already living on my own with a Mercedes in Tampa, Florida in a nice luxury apartment all at 19 years old. And this all happened just from me starting trading. And no, this all didn't come from just trading. But me starting trading changed my mindset, changed how I looked at money, changed how I viewed the world. It made me disciplined, it made me consistent, and it taught me all these different traits about myself that I need in order to be successful. I'm not successful because I trade. I'm successful because trading has developed me into the person that I need to be to be able to make money, to be able to be successful. And that's in any industry, not just trading. I can go in any industry now, dropshipping, Amazon, FBA, I could become a bodybuilder because I know what it takes and I know what is required to be able to get to that point, to be able to get to where I wanna be. Time, effort, and a plan. So at this point in my life, I haven't been working for a long time. Trading has occupied me completely. Trading, content creation has occupied my life 100%. This is what I love to do. This is what I have passion and this is what I'm going to continue to do. I wanna create content to help people change their lives, to help people that were once in my position that wanted to do what I'm doing exactly right now. And if I could do it, so can you. Because at one point, people were telling me the same thing. I was once watching a YouTube video with someone telling me, if I could do it, so can you. And I didn't really believe them. But now, look at me, I'm in the same position, talking to a camera, telling you that if I can do it, so can you. And I'm not even close to being finished. I have millions of dollars in funding that I need to get. I have hundreds of thousands of dollars in live accounts that I need to fund. I have tens of thousands of dollars to make every single day. I'm nowhere near finished. I'm still at only 1% of my actual goals. I've done so much in the past three, four years. Just imagine where I'm gonna be in 10, 20, 30 years, going 10 times harder every single day, going crazy. I'm telling you guys, trading can change your life and not just from making money. Trading is gonna change how you view the world. It's gonna change your mindset and it's gonna just gonna change who you are for the better. While I'm here talking about my trading and everything, I have a comment on my last video that says, don't know if you have a video on this already, but can you show how you calculate your risk with a lot size, keep up the content, appreciate it. Now, calculating your risk is always gonna be different depending on 
a few things depending on your account size depending on what your leverage is and also depending on the type of trading you're doing because if you're trading futures you're going to be trading with contracts but if you're trading something like forex you're going to be using lot sizes so depending on what you're trading that's what's really important but for me for example if i'm trading futures and i'm trading us 30 and i want to risk 500 dollars i'm going to put two contracts risking 50 points now calculating us 30 and nas 100 are very easy because all you got to look at it as is either dollar per point if you're using lot sizes in forex but if you're looking at it from the futures perspective, all you got to understand is $5 per point. And then once you understand that, you all you got to do is just calculate how much your stop loss is. Depending on what your stop loss is, depending on your leverage or your account, the balance of your account, that's going to determine whether you need to change a number for the contract size or change a number for the lot size. But it's very hard for me to tell you how to calculate my exact risk because I use two contracts or one contract risking 50 points because I tend to use the same number of stop loss. I'm either using a 30 point stop loss or a 50. So I'm only ever using two different risk sizes at the end of the day. So it keeps it very simple and I already know what I'm risking. But what I need you to do, the person who took this comment is understand your leverage, account size, how much you're averagely risking when it comes to a stop loss so that you can calculate whether you need to be using one contract or two contracts or depending if you're using Forex, whether you should be using a 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03. It all comes down to how much you want to risk. That's how you calculate the lot size. But like I said, futures and Forex is going to be a little different. But if you want a more in-depth video, just let me know. I'm, I'll make a complete video on it if you need the help. Now I want to talk to you guys about my overall model when it comes to trading. So what is my trading model? And to be honest, it's pretty simple. I don't have a complicated trading model. I only look for two types of setups, two primary types of setups. Now I'm going to keep this very simple, but the first setup I look for is false break scenarios. And what is a false break? Ideally, if you look at a range, there tends to be always consolidation with the false break. What I ideally look for is I look for a run of an old higher low. And in this case, it will be this low. And this is where I would look to take entries to take price higher. Now that is the false break model. This is one of the main things that I like to trade. It's just what I like to do. And the reason that this works is because the false break model is based off of liquidity. What is below and above old highs? Resting orders and resting orders is a form of liquidity. And that is why the false break move is something that I tend to look for very, very often. The main thing you got to understand with the false break moves is you just got to understand what highs and lows are going to lead to this type of move that's what you should be focusing your time on and if you want to learn about that make sure you check out the free course the second model is going to be fair value gap fills now what you guys need to understand is the way the market moves market leaves gaps behind that's just how the market is the market creates gaps and leaves gaps behind so what i like to look for with the fair value gap model is i like to look for price to retrace into a old higher time frame fair value gap and look to take price the opposite direction and in this case the ideal area that i would be looking to take the trade would be inside of a fair value gap now you guys got to keep in mind this is very 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 basic schematics there's a lot of things that will really determine whether i'm going to take a trade or if i'm not going to take a trade but i primarily love fair value gap fields because this is something you're going to find every single day it's just how the market is if you understand the market if you understand liquidity you will know that fair value gap fills happen very often and this is one of my favorite setups next to false breaks these two they can also correspond you can catch a false break into a fair value gap vice versa you could trade a fair value gap after you run an old higher low this trading model has led me to a lot of success when it comes to catching trades catching major trades winning great trades consistently that's the main thing anybody can catch trades anybody can win trades but who's going to catch and win trades consistently it comes down to having a model that re replicates and happens over and over and over. You see this, you know, jigsaw, this big circle. That's what happens with the market and with our models. It happens over and over and over and over. And we're able to make money every single day. Now, I am going to also throw in a couple other things just to give you guys some little tips. So like I said, when you're paying attention to false break moves, the main areas you're gonna to wanna to watch for are the previous day's highs and previous day's lows. You wanna pay attention to session highs and session lows. And you also wanna pay attention to the weekly highs and lows. These are gonna be the main three areas to pay attention to when it comes to looking for false break moves. Now, when you're looking for fair value gaps, the best fair value gaps are gonna be on the higher time frame. And by higher time frame, I mean the one hour, the four hour, and the daily time frame. 
These are the main three time frames that I like to look for fair value gaps. And these are the only time frames you need when it comes to fair value gaps. Because what you guys got to understand is there is fair value gaps on every single time frame. It comes down to what is going to be higher probability. Higher probability for value gaps are going to be on the higher time frames. They're going to align with the overall trend of the higher time frame. And they're going to align with time. These are the three things that I like to pay attention to when looking for fair value gap moves. Now you understand how you can use both my false break moves and my fair value gap fills. Now, like I said, this is just a very brief explanation. If you want a deeper analysis, make sure you check out the free course or join the VIP trading network so you can see me do this live. And we're about to go live with the VIP trading network. As always, every single day we trade live with the VIP trading network. This is what we do. We like to live trade. I like to send you my trades while I'm taking them. And I like to talk to you, mentor you, walk you through any questions you have about trading while I'm trading. It's the best way. In my opinion, I could teach you on my mentorship sessions on the weekend. I could teach you with back testing, but at the end of the day, learning real time, taking real setups as they're happening before they're happening and actively managing risk and seeing how other traders that have been trading for longer than you also do that is how you're really going to learn and improve the fastest. And it's the cheapest way to learn. Right now I'm about to send up the video chat uh, as always we about to start it up you know what time it is it is 9 27 as you know 9 30 is the new york stock exchange open is that's when we like to get into the market because that's what we want volume what is new york stock exchange open volume that's all it is the goal is to just follow the trade plan catch a good trade manage risk and move on to the next today is thursday we have one more day after today, but tomorrow's NFP, so we may not trade. It all depends how today goes, so let's just get into the charts. All right, that's just the first trade. We're going to see shorts on as 130-point stop loss. At the previous day's high, we ran it. Ideally, we'd want to see a run of that four-hour low to tap this one-hour gap. That would be a good retracement. And, yeah, it's 9.33, so we still got time. And then, apparently, Powell speaks, too. Taking the same exact trade idea on US 30 at the previous day's high when it filled back into this four hour gap right over here. Now we're going into 10 o'clock. Last trade, ideally, we'd want to see it reach for this one hour gap down there. We shall see, but we're in profit a little bit. We'll see if you want on 30, just hit. Same trade I just took on NAS, but you know, NAS want to be a bitch. Not, oh, not yet. You up right now. We got to close that thing out of bando. Yeah. There go your TP. All right, just got the TP again. So now I'm break even, break even at TP1, risk free. So now we're one trade, break even, which is a win, and then we're one loss for the day so far. gonna close this trade where it is fuck it, it's more than likely gonna go higher i'm just gonna close it with a small profit appreciate y'all for being here we're gonna be back tomorrow tomorrow's nfp so we're gonna see what we can do though and this is the reality of what it's like to be trading at the end of the day i had one loss and one break even trade the break even trade i consider that a win i easily consider that a win no just break evens are wins because those are trades that gave me the reaction i was looking for but just didn't fully play out but I did take a small profit on it, so it is what it is. But we're down one trade for the day, down 500. You can see we're down only 421, and that's with taking two trades, risking $500 each. So I think that's pretty good risk management at the end of the day. We're not going to win every trade. Our job is to stay in the game to be able to take another trade, to be able to be able to trade tomorrow. And tomorrow's NFP, so there should be some good volume, some good movements. And today was just a trending day. The days that I do the worst, the days that I don't necessarily always win are the trending days. And as you can see that, it goes to show that is exactly what happened today. As I'm getting gas and I'm about to be on my way to the bank real quick, got to withdraw money. But I want to talk to you guys about understanding losses, understanding that losing is part of the game, understanding that it's necessary in order for you to be successful. Everybody takes losses. Every business takes losses. In order for you to go up, in order for you to make money, you got to lose money. It's just part of the game. To make money, you got to lose money. And especially in trading specifically, you got to understand to make money in trading, you need to be able to risk money. Trading is a risk money for more money game, not turn zero dollars into 
a dollar, you could turn a dollar to two dollars, two dollars to four dollars. That's how trading is. That's what trading is really like. You gotta understand that losses are gonna happen. I take losses every week, every month, every year. It's gonna happen. It's about maintain. Okay, we do this every time. I tell you guys every time. I need to just start putting my seatbelt on. But you gotta understand that losses are gonna happen. They're gonna happen. I take losses. Everybody takes losses. The richest people in the world take losses. The best traders, the best people in your industry take losses. But the difference between you and them is they know how to handle themselves when they're taking losses. They know how to keep themselves from taking major losses. They know how to keep their losses small and their wins big. That's the difference. There's a big difference between, okay, yeah, here, here's Luna. She agrees with what I'm saying. She, she said I was spitting, spitting some facts. But you gotta understand that the people with the most money take losses and they know how to handle themselves in those situations, especially in trading because I don't do anything else besides content creation and trading for the most part. You gotta understand that in a game such as trading, you gotta be able to handle yourself when you're stressed. You gotta be able to handle yourself in stressful situations. That's what really comes down from it at the end of the day. And most people, they don't understand that. Most people, they wanna do things such as take a whole bunch of trades. They want to over risk. They want to not follow their plan, but then they want to be successful and it's not as easy as that. It takes time and losses are part of the game. I know you want to win every trade. You want to have a 100% win rate. You want to win every trade every week. You want to win every day straight. We all do, but it's not that easy. It comes with time. And you got to understand, we're in this game to make money. We're not in this game to be the best traders in the world to show off for what? Do you want to be the best trader in the world or do you want to make money? That's really what you got to ask yourself. We're in this game to make money. And what you got to do to make money may not be easy. It may not come to your liking. But at the end of the day, you got to know what's necessary. and You got to know what you got to do. It also comes down to having confidence in your plan, having faith in your system. Because most people, they don't have faith in their system. Most people, they don't trust their trading strategy. They don't trust their system because they don't win enough trades. The thing you got to understand for you to get confidence, for you to be confident in your strategy, in your system, however you're trading, your entry models, your exit models, you have to win trades. And with that being said, that means you have to get experience. You have to take wins. You have to take losses. You have to get break even trades. You got to see you got to see what conditions you work best in, what conditions you work the worst in. And it comes with experience because you're not supposed to be taking a thousand trades in a day, a hundred trades in a day for you to compound 100 to 1,000 trades, it's going to take you a couple months, a couple years, and it just comes with time. To understand yourself in trading, it comes with time. To understand your system, to have confidence in your system, to have confidence in the way you trade your strategy, it comes with time because I could tell you my strategy works for me, but you're not going to have that same level of confidence because you don't got the experience. You just got to be patient. Like I said, it comes with time. You got to submit to time. The main thing in trading is submitting to time. Right, Luna? She said, you got to submit to fucking time. Be patient, bro. This isn't going to happen overnight. I know you want it to. I want it to, too. I truly wish it could happen overnight. But all good things take time. And all the best things, the things that are worth waiting for, take time. So let's not rush the process. Let's stay consistent. Stay on our path. Stay on the plan. And keep our foot on the fucking gas. Just got the money and everything. Look at this. Look at the bag. This is about like 2000 and this is, is all going towards bills. This shit is all 20s and probably like three tens. One thing I want you guys to understand about money is money comes and goes like nothing. The amount of money, I want you guys to do this little activity. Think about how much money you've spent on bills, food, anything. Just how much money you've ever touched in total if you never had to spend it. We've touched a lot of money. It comes down to our money management and where our money is going to and also time management because time is money and if you're doing things that is a waste of time you're wasting money because that could be time that you're using to make more money or do things that are going to indirectly bring you money later on like give value and just work in general but yeah money comes and goes just got to learn how to make money it's all process it's all math at the end of the day that's all numbers making money comes from giving value it's an exchange of energy you don't make money you are taking money you are given money That's how you get money. Money is taken from other people. The only way you're going to get money is from taking it from somebody else's hands and putting it in yours, not physically taking it. But you know what I mean? It's like I'm about to put this money into a check just to pay bills. I wish I could just throw this money on a little vacation, but hey, it is what it is. So now that you guys know how trading has seriously changed my life and is going to continue to change my life, I challenge you guys to just start. You don't need to have money right now. 
You don't need to invest nothing. Just click the link in the description to start the free course. It's going to teach you all the basics you need to get started, to get you involved in trading, to introduce you to the market. That's all it is. Free course is meant to give you everything you need to teach you from zero to give you the beginner steps to see if this is something you even want to be interested in doing the rest of your life. Because at the end of the day, none of us want to work forever. I don't want you guys to work for someone else for the rest of your life. And I don't want to work for someone else the rest of my life. I treat you guys as your family because I wouldn't want nobody else in my family being a slave to this system. So at the end of the day, it all comes down to just starting. You can get rich doing anything. It comes down to what you want to get rich doing and what you're going to be putting your time and effort into. Stay safe, stay productive, and I'm going to see you guys tomorrow for another productive day.